if you look at both of us, you might think that uh, we are all from Africa, but we are all from Ghana. That it looks like my uncle from Ghana. Oh, okay, okay, okay. obrigado, obrigado. <laughs> And indeed, being in Salvador Bahia, I can confidently say that this city indeed is the blackest city out of Africa. Oh, oh man, I, I just, just I'm telling you, bro. Can I, can I take you to Africa? Keep, keep Africa. You want to <laughs> ah, yeah. say, say he's about. going to be eaten by animals. Oh, no, come on with that. <laughs> How does it feel being here? Lovely and amazing. You know the funny thing about it? I'm seeing people, I look at the guy and say, there, that's my uncle. Everything. It's, it's the black place. It's the black place. She didn't know that it's 80% black. It's the city is 80% black and... Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. What's I the difference it. between living in Salvador and living in the United States? Uh, shoot. It's way less dangerous. You know, I grew up in the projects, you know, uh, dangerous situations in New York. The, don't have to deal with the, the U.S. White Americans, sorry for all the white people out there, but y'all know how y'all are. Uh, out here is just way better, man. I love it. It's, you know, it's beautiful, everyone. Like, the food is amazing, the people are nice, the music is lively. The blood is amazing, man. For over 400 years, but when we see these people, we connect. You don't have to say anything, we just connect. Just like Salvador is like the, the hub for the diaspora because in, in Africa, you got 54 countries to choose from. But in Brazil, you only got one city to come to, so everybody comes here. Everybody should check out Salvador. By the way, a big shout out to Kali for taking us around Salvador Bahia. And please, she has a YouTube page. You all should surprise her by subscribing to her YouTube channel. The link is in the description. <laughs> Brazil is definitely one of the best things that I've done in 2023 and if you agree with me then please like this video leave a nice comment and please share this video so that others can have a piece of this yeah. you live here so I live in New York okay. but I used to live here I lived here for seven years and then last year I bought an apartment here uh, in Baja wow. yeah, so so yeah, so I kind of live between New York and here. Why did you decide to live in here? So, you, you remember the Michael Jackson video, They Don't yeah, Care About Us, yeah. years ago? So yeah. I saw that video when I was a kid, and then back in 2002 or 2003, India Ari recorded a live DVD here in Bahia. And it kind of inspired me to want to come. I came for vacation in 2007, and I ended up staying for seven years. Yeah, and then last year I came back uh, just on vacation and I ended up buying an apartment. <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of crazy. crazy does, does it, the, how does it feel living in here as a black person? It's great. It kind of reminds me of, uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of being in West Africa. Um, but like with other influences, clearly. Um, it's, uh, I feel like living in Salvador as a black person is much more comfortable than living in some of the other cities in Brazil, like Sao Paulo or in Rio where uh, it'd be kind of strange, like walking into a high-end store and people look at you like, like you don't belong there. Bom, tem no trabalho, tem... Tipo, você andando mesmo, aí a pessoa pensa que perdeu alguma coisa. Não perdeu, mas tipo, pensa que você roubou. Ou você vai em alguma loja, em shopping, o segurança vai atrás de você. Você já, já sofreu racismo? Já, e já tem os amigos que sofreram também. Uh, but you get that in Salvador too, but not nearly as much as some of the other cities in Brazil. So for me, it feels really comfortable being here. Hey, can I, can I perform it and then we just get a shot? Yeah, boy. You know me? Just. <laughs> Dance call. 
it's called capoeira. It's a uh, dancing, it's a uh, fighting, it's a sport. It was created by um, Africa-Brazilian people uh, since 18th century as a way of self-defense against uh, anti-slavery, anti-black people persecution. Wow! And there are two types of uh, capoeira. Angola, capoeira Angola, and regional, capoeira regional. Uh, capoeira regional is more like a sport with acro acrobatic movements okay. and stuff like that. But Angola uh, capoeira, the other type, it's more, it's lower, it's more like a dance. Oh! Okay! Oh wow! So you go! I want to know how the capoeira dance came into existence. Olha, é, nós não criamos, né? A capoeira já estava no mundo antes de mim. Okay. Mas é, tenho 67 anos okay. e venho desarrojando essa capoeira aqui já faz 52 anos. Okay. Né? Okay. Mas antes de mim já havia outra passagem de outros mestres, de outras gerações. Uh -huh. said, uh, capoeira it came into existence before he was born. It was here a long time ago, 19, uh, 18, 18, 1861, that, you know, before he was born, the capoeira exists. But yeah, that as they are growing, they are also modif uh, modificating it to make it uh, a fight. But before, it was a dance. After being here for the past five days, I would say that Savannah by here, consists of two cities in one. That is the lower city yeah. and upper city. Where we are right now is called Pelorino. Yeah, it's called Pelorino, it's historical center of Salvador. The city uh, originated by here. And okay. we are going downstairs to the downward city. So Pellerino is the uh, the largest colonial preserve what uh, property, eh? Yeah, the historical house. Okay. In Pellerino, it's the largest conjunction of uh, colonial architecture. Okay. In Brazil, maybe in Latin America. Okay. Uh, upstairs, uh, we had. Uh, house for families, for white families, okay. and downstairs we have uh, shops and markets uh, where enslaved people uh, used to work. So uh, we are going down to yeah. the lower city? Yeah. We're and we're going to gonna, we're gonna use the first elevator? The first elevator constructed in Brazil, it's called the Levador La Cerda, which links the upper side city with the downside city. We are here. To take the elevator to the down part of the city. Yeah. And uh, how much is it? 15 cents. 15 cents. Of guys. It's not panoramic, panoramic lift. <laughs> so you can't see anything? No. Oh. Wow. There's 20 seconds of history. So, <laughs> yeah. We are inside the first ever elevator built in Brazil. I made this for you, right? Who says it here? Woo! Okay. This is it. How long does it take? It's fast. Okay. So, imagine during uh, the slavery time, where there was nothing like a lift, the slaves need to carry all the stones up by step street. By by steps. Step street. Wow. We have a lot of step streets linking the lower city with the upper city. So does it mean that during the slavery time the slaves used to carry up everything, everything. including the uh, slave lords. They have to carry even their slaves out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are in the lower city, in the oldest part of Salvador. And it was exactly here, in the colonial period, uh, 7th century, 
that we had the first most important uh, port in Brazil and it was by here that we received thousands about the total in Brazil was about five million Africans enslaved people and here this place we received many of these Africans. When they, they arrive in Brazil by here, northeast of Brazil, especially Recife and Salvador. Was exactly here. And I've seen like a, the floating fort. What is that useful? This fort was also built in the 60th century, between 60 and 70th century. It's one of the oldest. Uh, defensive system in Brazil and it was built exactly in front of the city because Salvador was planted, it was start to be built there to protect the city of any kind of uh, invasion attack. Do you understand? So we have the fort there and more forts to the left, there is Barra and more to the right because the city was concentrated here. To the top? In the top. So Salvador was chosen to be the first capital in Brazil, also because of the strategic position in the northeast, also having the most important port, and also because of the position there. Because from there it would be easy to see any kind of attack. And that building, uh, the palace, was the first Brazilian government like off sea in Brazil. One thing that I really want to know. Mm -hmm is that the fact that in Salvador Bahia, even though it's the largest black community, you still see a lot of mixed race in the country. Why is this so? Isso aí, uma outra coisa que a gente tem que realmente enfatizar nesse processo de, é, de miscigenação é que existiu políticas públicas mesmo do, por parte do, do, do governo para é, embranquecer a população brasileira. Então, a vinda de imigrantes para o Brasil não foi é, tão somente, como se fala, uma perspectiva de substituir os braços é, escravizados no mercado de trabalho, no sentido de serem mais qualificados que os escravizados. Teve, sim, um componente de racismo no sentido de buscar embranquecer a população brasileira. E, nesse sentido, é, foi feito políticas públicas para tra trazer e dar condições a que imigrantes europeus viessem para cá, para o Brasil, se estabelecessem em, em contraposição. Você tinha, do, de outro lado, você teve a marginalização da população negra, que até hoje é, vive nas piores condições é, sociais e econômicas. Né? Então, foi uma política de Estado mesmo, esse processo de embranquecimento. Então, essa, essa, essa diversidade que nós temos hoje, não podemos deixar de levar em consideração todo esse processo de violência que eu falei no início. Você tem essa violência perpetrada sobre as mulheres negras e sobre as mulheres indígenas. A presença de, 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 da população negra passou a ser um obstáculo, supostamente, ao desenvolvimento nacional. É uma contradição na medida que, no início, foi justamente essa mão de obra negra que deu condições do Brasil enriquecer. E quando chega na virada do século XIX para o século XX, já perto do período da escravidão, se pergunta o que, é que vai se fazer com essa massa negra aí? <risos> Só é olhar os números de mortos, jovens negros, que são mortos todos os dias aqui pela violência. Né? E pela, o, quem é que está com os piores indicadores de, no campo econômico? É a população negra. Então você está se falando aí em 55% da população, segundo dados do, do IBGE, 55, 56% da população, que vive justamente nas piores condições, muito em função desse racismo que estrutura a sociedade brasileira, dizendo quem vai ser pobre e quem vai ser rico. Então, se você tirar uma fotografia dos ricos do Brasil, dificilmente você vai ver um negro. Mas se você for tirar uma fotografia da, 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 da cadeia, você vai ver a massa negra toda lá presente. Então, e na academia também você percebe, em alguns cursos, por exemplo, a ausência de, de pessoas negras. Né? How has Salvador been able to um, maintain the culture of Africa, even though it's been years since uh, they came in here? Yes, 
Assim, nós temos um, um legado muito grande, importante da, da cultura africana, né? E Salvador, sim, é um, um dos locais, uma das cidades que mais é, guarda essa herança africana, né? Mas isso no Brasil inteiro é manifesto também. Mas Salvador realmente tem esse papel destacado. Só que, recentemente, nós estamos sofrendo muitas ameaças é, em relação à valorização desse legado africano. Você tem é, religiões evangélicas hum. né, que têm pregado, por exemplo, a abominação do que é legado africano, ou seja, você tem uma demonização do que é legado africano. Isso é muito, é, como é que eu diria, perigoso para uma cidade que foi construída né, com essa herança e de repente pode ser justamente, é, pode justamente perder boa parte desse legado em função da intolerância religiosa. Né? E é importante que a juventude negra tenha justamente essa dimensão do valor que é essa cultura africana, né? Eu sou big man. Can he tell us how the privilege came into existence? Esse histórico onde nossos direitos foram negados, né? He say it's because of the 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 rights of the black people. They were not getting their rights. Ah, e assim, tirando o direito da gente ter boa moradia, bom emprego, os direitos tiveram que vir para a parte da parte alta, a parte excluída da sociedade, né? You say because of oppression, you know, these things that they are not giving the black people the life that they need, they end up finding where is there is nobody, where is more higher, the mountains, the rocks. So that's where they've been running to. That's where they started uh, excluding from the excluding them from the city, having their own. Because this place were bush forest before. That's where they started. You know, they are getting up the city. Hoje em dia está no contexto melhor, mas antigamente era tentar sobreviver nesse aspecto, né? De how was life growing up in pavilhas in those days? Tem um contexto histórico que explica que teve a guerra do do Brasil contra o Paraguai. Say there was a gist that they said the Brazil fought with Uruguay. E eles disseram que os negros iam na frente, em troca se sobrevivessem e se desse tudo certo dariam moradia, dariam melhores condições. Ok. So when they started the war, they put the black people in the front war to promise them that if they win the fight, they are going to give them houses, lands and all those things. E lá quando eles estavam na guerra tinha uma planta que chamava que era uma fava. Fava é, um, é um, uma semente e dessa fava vem o nome favela. Ok. So this this season this time they have a seed of a plant they call it a, a fava. Sim, fava. É is a is a seed. It's called fava. So each one todo mundo nome, tinha tinha essa planta demais com essa semente que o nome era favela. Ok. So they have a lot of this plant that have these seeds. So they end up calling this community favela. So they they won the the, the war. Quando voltaram não tinha não tiveram os benefícios que foram prometidos. So when they came back from the war, they didn't give them what they promised to give them the black people. E aí eles foram para as partes mais altas. So they started going to the higher places. As partes mais excluídas da, da, do centro da the cidade. The part that is more excluded from the city. E acabou levando o nome de favela. End up having the name favela. Wow. So now favela is home for black people or home for everyone? Então hoje favela é casa para pretos ou para todos? Para todos. For everybody. Para todos. Na verdade, a base da cultura está dentro da favela. Say the the basic of the of the culture is in the favela. That's the base.
been here. I asked so many people, but I want to visit a favela. I want to meet my own people because where I'm living, I hardly see black people. And when I was about to carry out, I was like, please don't go. Please don't go. It's dangerous. It's risky. But I'm like, you know what? My people can never be dangerous to me. So I need to go. And when I came in here, to my surprise, I'm meeting the most friendliest people that I've ever met in my whole life. And everybody wants to say hi, everybody wants to talk to me. The fact that they know that I'm coming from Africa. Pesa Fera, Busea, Arena, Pesa. Tuesday, Tuesday. You're born Tuesday. I, I was born on Tuesday too. Eli Tamena, Seu Desa Fera. Oi? So I am called Kobina. Eli Kobina. And you will be called Abena. And you are Abena. You know what I mean? Abena. 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 Yeah, it's Abena, Abena, Abena. It's Abena, Abena, Abena. It's like you're walking in the street and you see somebody and you be like, this person looks like my sister, man. Looks like my auntie. Looks like this. Indeed. Indeed, now I need to agree with you all that indeed this is the blackest city out of Africa. Literally, every minute that you move, you see somebody who looks like you. You get it? And it's, you are not in Africa. It's interesting. Very, very interesting. You see the kind of shops? Yeah. Kind of yeah. The size of the shops. Yeah. The outside. You know, you can see how they stand there. Everything is like, like, like you are in Lagos or Accra. I won't lie, man. The women here are so gorgeous, bro. They're so gorgeous. Like, you see some gorgeous African sisters right here. Man. Look at that. Man, this is a, a real pretty African, man. Look at that. She's waving at me back. That looks like an auntie. Oh man, I, I just, I'm telling you, bro. Wait the one minute. I, I, I just get so excited when I see my people. Oh, look at that, these are yam. Woo! Yam. Yam. I have been to Benin. And I've seen how proud the people of Beni are when it comes to their indigenous religion, which is voodoo. And it was so cool to see that in Salvador Bahia, there's a shrine for voodoo. It means that they are so proud to connect with the religion of their ancestors. Voodoo Aizan. You see, that is Voodoo Aizan. This is Voodoo Ejitogo or Dubini? Dubini. Dubini, so it's Bini. So, yeah, yeah. You guys, you believe that you guys came from Benin? Was this a credit to keep us being in Benin? See, yes. And what religion are you performing in here? Is it Voodoo or does it have a name? Uh, us, us keep us is the practicando aqui. É Voodoo ou tem outro nome além do Voodoo? Só Voodoo. Só Voodoo. Só Voodoo. A gente tenta manter. It's a, a tradition. tradition. They are fighting so much to maintain the traditional of the voodoo in, in Salvador. So their ancestors hand over to them? Então suas ancestrais que deixou para vocês. Sim, sim. You see, yeah. Tanto que aqui aqui o terreiro que é de Savalu. É de Savalu. Quem trouxe pra gente foi Mantança. E o Mm. You see, there is somebody, the, the woman who came from Africa at that time. You see, some quantos anos? Mais do que quinhentos, duzentos anos. About 200 years ago, there was a Bini that stayed. So the Bini that stayed here is the Bini that came from Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Everything going on, you know, all the difficulties, but they're still maintaining it. Okay. They even grow calabash in here. Like, literally, this is Africa. Wow. Yeah. My tempo deixa mais fica grande. The more you leave it, the bigger it becomes. Yeah. What is calabash? 
in Ghana, sacrifices like this are done by our parents. And coming to Brazil, Salvador, by here, seeing the same sacrifices being done, these are what we call food for the gods. If somebody want to cast you away back in Africa, they do exactly the same sacrifices. Hi, how are you? Tutu Bang. Tutu Bang. I love your outfit. This shows that indeed our ancestors left Africa, but Africa within them never left. Welcome to Salvador by here. of our itinerary to Salvador Bahia. I was told that there is an African party that is happening that I need to be around, yeah? yeah, yeah so yeah. I came in here and what I'm seeing is like almost everyone here is wearing white. No, I was explaining there's a yeah. lot of Yoruba influence in Salvador especially. Mm. From like the, yeah, the Nigerian Yoruba ethnic group. Yeah. And so they like uh, have the religion called Candomblé. And with the Orishas and the deities, and then on Fridays, they all wear white. Wow. Yeah. So that's why you're wearing white. Exactly. Are you a Yoruba too? Yes, I actually did a DNA test. Wow. Yes, I'm like 35% Yoruba, yeah. That's amazing, man. This city is more like an Afrocentric city. Yes, it definitely is. It's like very like, we call it like Black Rome, like Afro capital, like yeah. Like the Afro influence is so important to the people here. And they really like cherish it. I think even some, I have some Nigerian friends that even say to me like it seems like we know more about because there's so much assimilation on the continent right now and like Christianity and everything. And here it's still very strong like the, yeah, like the old religions, yeah. The African spirituality religion. Yes, exactly. This is the most visited church in Salvador. It's in the Lower City. Uh, this, this church was built in 1745, so a long time ago. Uh, it's a special church not just because of uh, the religion, but also because of the syncretism that is very beautiful between Candomblé and Catholicism, the Afro-Brazilian religion with the Catholicism. So we have this mixture and this church you can see very clear during the celebration of the Senhor do Bonfim that happens every year uh, in the beginning of the year. So it's the most popular party after the carnival. It's very beautiful. Everybody comes from the other side of the city walking for about eight kilometers dressed in white, singing, praying, laughing. It's a very beautiful church. I hope you come here. I think this ribbon is very important and I see it everywhere in the city. Yeah, the original place is here, exactly <laughs> here. Uh, when the faithful people from this Saint Jesus, uh, they was used to bring a ribbon, but bigger than this, to make like an offering for Jesus, saying thank you for the blessing, thank you for the cure. And the, the manager of the church, the priest, decided to start to produce smaller and sell in order to uh, get money to the church and after a long years uh, we start to have a colorful ribbons but what means the ribbon now uh, each one that put the ribbon here they made it three wishes for jesus so you take the ribbon you make one two three so it's a place special because you also can touch the fate of the people so imagine it, i'm touching the fate of the people wow. you cannot do this in anywhere in the world yeah and the so these are, these here, are people's wishes. The faith here dance and it's colorful. And these are all people's wishes. All the people wishes. Is this now? It's full, but they cut this often, okay. and they burn. When they catch fire and burn, they say that the smoke of this brings the, the wishes to the sky. What does this mean? 
This means uh, wishes or or also people that bring something like pictures or material representation of the cube. Example. Uh, she's asking about the daughter for the cure about the children. So each part that you see here like this is a person asked to cure the leg. So we have this uh, kind of a, a believe. Yeah, I believe for 100 years. And I believe that this is also consequence from the uh, Africans, the Afro influence. Why? Because in Africa, the many religions are used to, to give offerings for the gods. Yeah? yeah. And we don't have, we don't see this in other churches around the world. Yeah. I only see this in Brazil. In Brazil. So whenever you come to Salvador by here and you want somebody to take you around, you definitely need um, Kali. She's been amazing, she's been awesome, taking us all over Salvador, making sure we know all the history, the culture, and also everything that we need to know about the people. Yeah, and I focus working more, showing the local Salvador. So if you want to escape a little from the tourist place and you want to visit the community to see interesting places here, you can uh, send me a message, uh, my Instagram, my YouTube channel, your local host Kali. Yeah. And I also offer an Afro uh, tour here that we, I call the Afro Brazilian Salvador. We walk about five hours visiting good places here, very interesting about history, culture, food, dance, gastronomy, everything. Nice to meet you and thank you so much for showing me around thank your you city. So much. Appreciate it. It's time to say goodbye to Salvador Bahia, but a big shout out to uh, my brother from Eritrea who met me in here and he's like, you know what, I'm going to host you because you're doing an amazing job. So he gave us his Airbnb and it's our final day and I just want to say thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to put a link in the description if you are traveling to um, Salvador Bahia and you want to stay in this brother's Airbnb, leave a, um, check out the link in the description and um, yeah, book and support it's a three bedroom house everything is here and i love my five days in here africans supporting africans